Everybody, welcome back. Today is March 27th, where I am at, 11.15 a.m. It is a Wednesday here on the East Coast. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today on The Bunker. I have a couple things going on. I'm going to be showing you a little bit more about time-based correction today. I've got a setup here that I wanted to document. And the easiest way to do that was to go live with you today and show you uh, exactly what I'm talking about. So thank you for showing up today. I'm not expecting a huge crowd to turn out for time-based correction stream. So if you are here, please do me a favor and hit the like button. And that will help our reach. I want to thank the early people here in the chat. Rob, Cat, Trollpats, and Darth Ligma. Thank you all for showing up today. Ronnie, welcome into... And um, <clears throat> so that's what we're going to be working on. I've been trying to do some things on the stream setup, but still not having a whole lot of improvement luck here. And it's not a big deal, uh, again, because pretty soon the bunker is going to be moving. So um, that should be coming towards the end of April. And while it's been a fun two and a half years here in this bunker... Uh, we have good things coming and a uh, larger ability to do more restorations and space to work around and more a better looking studio probably <laughs> so I'm excited to see it I'm excited to show it off I don't really know what's going on that's all still working itself out <clears throat> but in the meantime, we're going to be down here in the regular bunker, and I have had so many projects coming in. If I'm looking at my big board here, which is my cue board, it's ridiculous. Uh, in the shop right now, I have three PVMs, one BVM, a PCCRT, a time-based corrector, and then four Toshiba CRTs. That are all televisions so i've got myself loaded up with just a ton of work here and as i do have footage shot from two crts that i finished i've just been packed with work so hopefully as uh i mean i'm probably going to be jam-packed with things up to the move so i don't know i'm going to try to get one of those videos done at least before i move on either the Sony or the JVC. I'll try to probably do the Sony first since that was the first one done. The Sony KV1 FS120. Oh, excuse me. All right. So thank you all again. Alex, Zefcor, welcome in. Everybody, thank you all. As you can see on the side of your screen here, we do have the setup for the time-based correction test. Um, try not to jerk the camera around, get my arm off the desk here. I'm gonna fire it up. First off, we're gonna be using a Sony BVM. That is the 8044QD. It's a high resolution um, BVM. <coughs> and uh, I'm gonna use the other microphone so that I can talk to you more when I get over there. But that's what we're going to be using. I've got a JVC VCR player. This is a my best VCR player that I have that's working right now. I have a couple others, but they're dead. Then um, I have another one that works, but it's not nearly as good as this one. This is a JVC. It has uh, S-Video support and what else has it got it's got like dual output so the good thing is is for this test i'll be able to show you both s video and composite video they come out of this machine simultaneously it's a high resolution vcr so it puts back one of the best images out of any vcr i've ever used um, compared to other ones but we're going to test the time-based corrector that's right. And um, first off, let's just talk about why. Why would you even need time-based correction? This is a problem that was primarily for... Let me turn down this music a little bit. 
I'm gonna turn actually let's go ahead and for now I'm just gonna pause the music and turn it off we won't worry about that so time-based correction what is it now well, it's kind of complicated but what happens is there's a signal of course the analog video signal is what we're working with um, and time-based correction is based upon mostly tapes uh, sometimes DVDs have it have a little bit of this in it uh, but most of the time what you're needing a time-based corrector for is to in these this day and age it used to be to kind of copy tapes or back tapes up VHS tapes Betamax tapes um, what would happen is on the original copy of the tape you could have a couple of issues right it could be a tape that's loaded with security like macrovision which I'll show you here in a second examples of that and also there could be timing issues in the tape where the tape gets out of sync a little bit and then when that happens like your audio and video get out of sync on the tape or something on the playback like if you have a you miss a frame like that happens frames get dropped uh, on a tape player it's a very you know crude elementary uh, form of playing back media so it had a lot of inconsistencies obviously in the playback and what would happen is that signal or your signal of playback <clears throat> When you try to capture that, um, your capturing device, whether it's a capture card or a VCR, it may have a lot of issues capturing the, the video that you're trying to take from it because either the timing gets messed up, again, colors could be thrown off. A lot of things can happen in this process. So um, back in the day, there were tons of di devices that, were made to try to help correct this signal and um, they're commonly referred to as time-based correctors um, the one we're looking at today is the data video TBC 1000 and it's based around this this is like the brain of this particular particular device and it does it just looks like an old kind of capture card maybe from the mid to late 90s uh, but there is no interface here you know to like read with a PC but it is designed to you got power coming in to the board and then you have a video signal that comes in that can be either composite or S video with audio the audio is just passed through the output over here and then um, actually what it does is it spits out the composite video either here or it spits out composite and S video uh, or composite video on this and then that goes to a video board that actually um, is inside that box it goes to another video board that amplifies the signal and sends it out to a lot it, I think it's got C uh, A B C D I don't know it might have four outputs of composite and four outputs of S video uh, total and they all do it simultaneously but um, this this inserts a frame if it drops a frame it's ready to insert a frame like a, a color bar frame it's it's ready to so that the device that you're using doesn't just see a missed frame like if you're going along and you're pumping through um, some kind of analog video on your setup okay right if you're pumping analog video through over this thing and your video signals going uh, into your capture device and you don't have this guy what's going to happen is is again there's going to be a frame that's going to drop most likely again you're relying on this old technology it used to happen when the technology was new what the heck do you think is going to happen now that it's been 30 years it's going to drop a frame at least and when it drops that frame what's going to happen well again you can uh your 
your image capture device is going to, what's it going to do in that dropped frame? Well, this is going to build a frame that's ready to insert in that dropped frame if a frame drops. It's also going to reconstruct the timing and everything on this image, which I'm going to show you in the example when we're testing here. I'm going to show you more about the timing. I'm going to show you some macro vision, which is like old school security built in. So you couldn't just rip off tapes and like pirate them and copy them and distribute them. So we're going to look at that. This will clean up and almost entirely get rid of that security feature of Macrovision. It doesn't all the way. So a lot of times people will say, you know, I was recording something and I tried to do a capture and I was only using the TBC and I still lost frames sometimes. Well, or you still had Macrovision show up in your um, occasionally in your image on your captured image. Well, that could be because you have not taken the all the macro vision out this will get rid of a good amount of it not every little bit of it but it will clean up it's kind of like an image cleaner right it's going to clean up the image and get it ready to be uh copied okay so this is important if you're finding old tapes we're talking a lot about lost media if you want to back up personal files you might need a device like this um, there's a lot of talk that you can get this done into a 4k capture card really good with Mike Chi's new uh, retro tank and that's probably gonna be even better option at this point if that is possible because it will cost less than these do and be more readily available and have more usefulness to you if that's the case if that's something that's important to you is actually capturing old video up to uh, 4k or something this is just going to spit out analog video again so you still even with this setup have to have some way to capture the the, the image now what we're going to do is we're not going to be capturing any image today we're going to be playing all this uh, back on the sony bvm here in a second so i'm sorry i know that was a really boring explanation i'm going to give everybody a second in the chat to catch up uh does anybody have any questions did that make any sense at all or did i just sound kind of like a rambling crazy person because <laughs> i know that can happen it's um <clears throat> so anyway we're going to jump in here i'm going to turn this uh, i'm not going to use see the thing about the toshiba stereo system that you see up there that's for testing audio playback because there's no stereo or there's no audio on this bvm this is a no speaker bvm so let's go ahead and power it on you can take a quick look at the jvc what it looks like when it when it comes on i'm going to turn one of these lights out let me see if i can get this set up better I'm just checking my microphone out. Um, All right, there we go. I think I'm online here. I'm going to turn this other microphone off. There we go. How are we doing out there? I'm going to give myself a little... Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry to yell in your ear. I just wanted to get the, um, the microphone over here that's on the side available. You can see me down here. I've got the... Uh, Mike here ready to go we're going to see what's going on here I'm not seeing any image oh that's because I have the data video turned off so if I turn that on okay let's see what we got going on here uh, first off let me turn it into regular mode okay so this is our JVC hope you can see it yep we can see it on the screen good JVC uh, just background that you would see on a CRT. Let me move that maybe a little bit more centered. Oops, sorry. I'll center this 
up, get that down so you can see more of the image. And what I've got going on here, okay. In the front, this is S-Video, this is Stereo Audio, and this is the input. The input on this device is on the front here. I do have uh, some down here that are kind of messed up for parts because they have bad problems on the processing board, but this is what the back of them look like. And it is, it's uh, four outputs for S-Video there, and then four composite video outputs, and four outputs for stereo audio. And then you have a barrel jack for power in, and normally a power switch right there. So that's what the back of this particular one looks like, and it's going to put out uh, the same signal quality pretty much from each one. You might get a little bit better of a signal coming from the S-Video stuff when you're using S-Video, but honestly, I've not seen much of an improvement personally um, through S-Video, through a device like this for like VHS tapes. It's not really been something that I've noticed. Uh, maybe I can turn this camera a little bit this way and we'll see if that'll help any. I know it'll kind of get maybe a little bit trippy, but maybe... Do that and kind of tilt it up. There we go. Like I can, you know, like hey, I'm like I'm talking down here. Your tube makes a little more sense. You can see my face. So again, that's where the input's coming in, and uh, then it's going to be going out. And the way I've got it set up right now is it's just got S video going in from the VHS player, and then S video going out to the VCR. Now I've also got composite video. This is a dual output VCR. So I've got composite video going directly to the monitor. So that's the two things I have set up here. And that way we can see what the signal looks like when it's going through this machine and when it's not going through this machine, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I've got a VHS tape in here that's been playing for a while. It's not, uh, I don't wanna get flagged for anything, so I don't really think it's going to. This is like a really old copy of uh, Dune and it doesn't matter what it's showing here. I'm going to show you on HV delay. Okay. Let me make sure I can get that. Maybe if I turn the light out, I can get that looking a little better over here. I'm going to try to make it so you can actually see what I see. Um, okay. That's better. I'm going to turn that down. Uh, that'll be fine. All right. So what we're working with now is the actual S video signal. I think let's see we can test test it real simply yes okay um, and this is interesting because yeah it's not coming through perfectly clear okay so this is the time-based corrected signal let me just make sure it's not being interfered with at all by doing that oh maybe it was being interfered with by putting it through double <laughs> okay so we're not going to do it like that. We're going to just shove it through there. But do you see here um, on this screen how you have like these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks down here. And then this is a straight green line, straight black line. This is all straight. And uh, this, you can only see this. This is outside of your normal visible area. Uh, these BVMs and PVMs have an HV delay, which just delays your sync. So what you're looking at is like the outside image. It's a corner, right? This is the upper left-hand corner of the image. This is the bottom left-hand corner. So you're like going into a middle frame, and then you're looking over at the side of that frame. That's what this HV delay is showing you, okay? Now, this is the cleaned up signal. This is the one that's passing through the uh, time-based corrector. When I switch over now, I'm going to switch over in a second to um, composite video. Let's see. First off, I want to plug this back in and see if that in interruption takes place again. Because I thought it was like going crazy there for a second. Okay. So that's, again, running through the time-based corrector. I should be able to push this, and there we go. Look at all this timing stuff, and look how there's a big cut here, right? It's not solid. Like, look at this. Perfect solid. This is all synced up nicely. This is, again, the processed image going through the time-based corrector, 
everything's lined up right here. If this is all you know, this is all you really need to know. Um, and this is, again, something you can only tell with this type of a monitor. But if you look over here, you can see we have a big sink rip. And, and that's most of that macro vision stuff, which you can look up more on macro vision. But that's all put in there to, uh, to prevent you from copying tapes. That's why if you look, it'll tear sync and things if you try to copy this signal just based off what it has right here. Okay, it's built in there to make it hard to reproduce. And then this is all timing, right? This is telling the image and the tape, you know, this is timing up things with the VCR. This is how everything's getting timed up with the audio uh, playback from the tape as well as the video. It's all based on these. So what happens is these timing notches and timing signals can get, of course, get warped or get screwed up. Like all this, and it's very com complex, you know. So then, again, if you put it through that machine, there's the same signal sent through there, but you could still see. We're still probably getting like a little bit of this macrovision. Like I said, you're getting rid of 90%, but not all of it. But that's a lot cleaner. So this makes it to where you almost can just basically go in and, and copy this or back up this image once it's been passed through this time based corrector. So, uh, what I was testing here today is I need to test the video signals on here. I need to test all the outputs and see if there's actually a difference. Hey, Belmont, welcome in. I need to test all the outputs here and see if there's actually any difference on uh, the video. Right, local H. CRTs can pick, CRTs can sync to a lot more things than. Um, like capture cards, man, capture cards, for example, will throw an image out. And so, um, it's same thing. This kind of stuff was sent through on TV broadcasts back when there was, uh, analog video sent over the air. Now it's what it's like H there's all this stuff. Now it's like HTCP or whatever it is. The nor the stuff for HDMI, that kind of, uh, that kind of signal on modern television. But anyway, that's how it looks when it's cleared up. And so this way, you know, right, you know, this device is working. Hey, Andre, good to see you. Uh, thanks for coming in, everybody. Again, if you're just showing up, I've been going for a little bit here, please drop a like for the algorithm. And I welcome you in. Thank you for coming. Um, but again, cleaned up image here. And that's S video. And then if I go over here, there we go, straight from the raw signal. And like, you know, this CRT has no problem catching that signal, but if you try to run that through a device trying to copy it, it just won't work. The interesting thing is, again, if I flip through this signal, I notice, um, which one is that? So I did have the customer say, that the S video signal looks darker. I do notice that you can see that kind of on this screen. It's going to be hard. Maybe if I push stop, well, I don't really want to stop it, but as I'm cycling through this, the composite straight from the player is a little bit brighter. Now it's not a huge amount of brightness, but that can make a big difference on a playback. And that is most likely from the analog video board. Uh, so yes, that's probably because the caps are bad. That's what we're thinking. Uh, what I'd like to do, I am seeing a drop in that. We might pull the device out and see about doing something else. I really don't want to get flagged for copyright. I doubt that's going to be good enough reproduction on there, but it's interesting how that all brightens up too. When I switch over to this signal. Like that does look a little bit more saturated, a little brighter. That looks like a little darker, maybe a little sharper. But I don't think um, it's hard to say. Like this is not one that's obvious. And 
it's hard to um this is what i was trying to convey to the customer it's hard to say that this issue nowadays you're not just dealing with having to restore the time-based corrector but it often depends a lot of times on the hardware you're using to back up the video uh, a lot of times people will use things that are also time specific or needing uh, restoration themselves like uh, old PCs that could be 15 years old now that are in need of work themselves. So what we're, what we'll do is, uh, I'm going to try to put it over in back in non HV mode. We'll go back to side by side so that I don't get flagged. I mean, that'd be hard for them to see. What I'm going to try to do is turn some. This tape is actually the funny thing. The reason I have this tape in here is it is one of the like craziest tapes I own. Let me see the, the details on this thing. It's this Dune tape, right? It's um, ridiculously long, and it's just a single tape. I can't remember what. It, why isn't it showing to? Two hundred and sixty-five minutes, and it is not good. Like not high quality. Two hundred sixty-five minute long tape. Uh, plus it has previews on it, so it has like five to ten minutes of previews before that. So it is an extremely ridiculous tape so i'm going to turn the brightness back up whoops i think i might have hit the rewind or stop button there let me turn to stop that off a little bit we're gonna go back here and try to get things balanced back on the uh, picture for a second and then i'm going to see i'm getting some weird like color things right is that through the Let's try and <clears throat> it's hard to say that so that's through the device. All right, let's check it out. We're gonna go I'm gonna um press play here again. And this is just straight through the the device and I'm gonna start switching up outputs on the back of this. And I'm going to see if I notice any kind of difference in picture quality or not as I change it. Not the most precise test, but I'm not getting like a... Usually, usually when they don't work very well, you get like zero picture out of them. Like very dark, very much darker than this. Okay. I'm not having in much of an issue with the S video out. It all looks consistent. Let's try now. I'm going to switch over and just use composite video out now. Which I should be able to put that in there. Switch over here. Wow. So that might be a lot different, right? Okay, let's see. I've got composite video out plugged into one. No, they're the same. See, that's composite. That's S video. It's a little darker. I think I mentioned like composite S video, composite S video. Those, but those signals are coming out of the data video. Interesting. But both the signals now should be time corrected. We got timing corrected there and there, yeah. I mean, it's not really showing a big difference in quality, as I said.
Okay. Now, if I turn this off, it should show the VCR. If I turn that off, what does it show? It should show color bars sometimes. I don't know. Not always. Okay. No color bars for me. That's interesting. See, now this is something. <sighs> See, normally it would show color bars right there. Let's see if we unplug the input. Well, I should see some color bars here, I think. But instead I'm seeing nothing. I'm seeing like some darkness come up on the screen, but nothing else. See, like there should be a color bar. So this has got a problem where I think it's missing. Oh, man, I think it's missing the uh, TBC pattern. So that might be an issue. So let me throw on, like I've got another one here that doesn't work. Let's see what it looks like. I believe this is okay to just power on. So this one, yeah, this is fine. All right, I'm going to plug another one in. Now, this one should show a terrible pattern on it, but let's see. Uh, does it have an on switch? Yeah, it's turned on. So this one should... This one should show a pattern, possibly, hopefully. Let's see. I mean, it's the same power. It's got power. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't seem to show it continuously. Okay. But you did see it come on there for a second. Let me... Maybe, maybe it's not just not in showing up quick enough on the computer. Or from the computer onto the to the video. See this. This is. Um, I have another one here. I'll turn it on and show you what's going on with it. I, I can't get it to work at all. Look at this one. It's got really crazy. I'll put an image into it. You can tell. Okay, in and out. Now let's send in some. See, look how bad. Now this one's way jacked up. And that's coming from the card itself. This card's messed up, like the um, the card I was showing you earlier that looked like the, the graphics card. That's what it looks like. And, and you can't do anything with that. That looks terrible. That's like what it looks like when it plays things back. The funny thing is, it's still correcting the timing on this thing, but it just, it doesn't, something's wrong with the playback. I've not been able to figure it out. Um, that's how that one looks. That's what, if it looks like that, if you get like streaks through the image like that, I can't fix that at all. I've not been able to figure that one out. All right. Well. That's kind of the deal with the uh, time-based correction, right? Okay. You kind of get a better idea for it. When that machine works properly, it cleans up the image. Now... The problem is these things were not built to last. They were not built to last 25 years, and that's what we're pushing as far as age on a lot of them. So that's uh, 
that's pretty much it for the big main topic in today's stream just wanted to come in and hang out how's everybody else doing i haven't seen anything going on for a while i can click the jazz back on we can hang out for a minute or we can call it a stream and get on to the next thing cool all right everything looks to be going good so far today on the stream since we actually went live i want to um the next stream i've already been preparing for it is going to be on how to uh order capacitors i'm going to go through and i talked about this last time a little bit more i'm going to go through we're going to order capacitors a stockpile of capacitors okay so that that will help you you know, you could set aside about a hundred bucks and get just about every capacitor you're going to need and a good amount of them um, to start off for your shop or something, for example. So that's what we're going to be working on uh, next time. Okay. Oh yeah, the Duke's dunk. That's all right. The worst part is, is the team's just gone, going transfer, and so is the coach. The coach took the job at Vanderbilt. yeah absolutely so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do we're gonna do the cap kit i've already got the thumbnail made for it i've got things set we'll do the cap kit shopping we're going to um i'll make the cap kit so that after the show is over we can get that shared around so you can actually order the one we make we'll do only we'll do only top brands um, of course, if we do that, the whole thing is going to probably sell out. The cap kit that we make will probably sell out after about 15 people buy it. Like, because that's what will happen. A couple of the items will go out of stock. And uh, then we'll be looking for a new um, part to replace it with. But uh, today, yeah, I'm going to jump on. If you guys want to see more stuff... Uh, I'm, I'm just a little confused on this thing because it's not really acting that tough, that terrible. I might switch out a board on it that's the video board to see if that changes anything at all because if it doesn't, I'm not going to be able to really fix this one. Um, but uh, this time-based corrector, I don't really see it doing anything wrong. It might be something else in the guy's setup. But anyway, uh, we'll get to that cap kit thing. We'll get it all going next time. I really appreciate y'all for being here and uh, hanging out with me today on kind of this chill stream. Short stream. I mean, still 35 minutes and uh, had a good time. Glad to always check in with everybody. Hope you have a wonderful day. Yeah, driving up prices of capacitors. There we go. Don't. <laughs> I don't think we can make a dent there, but. I will show you that. I'll show you how to save some money there and build up a nice pile of capacitors. So be on the lookout for that next. Uh, everybody have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next stream. Thank you again.